So we have the book, What They Never Told You in History Class, Volume 1. Can't pronounce his brother's name, but this is a real good, insightful book. All right. So let's see what it says. Let us remember that the Bible, from the Greek, uh, Biblia, if I'm pronouncing it right, books, is for all Christians the most sacred of books, the source of truth, the revelation of God's word. No other book has been so lovely reproduced, yet precisely because it is held so sacred, the Bible has been the subject of unending debate. And we know this is not a Christian book, but the book of the Israelites. The world's great religions, Henry R. Luce, Ed, New York Times, 1957. The first written languages used in the Bible were the ancient African languages of Egyptian. Um, Gs, Emeric, Aramaic, uh, Phoenician, Hebrew, says Carl C. Nichols in his short history of the English Bible. Interest this whole notion of anti Semitism. The one thing that is an incorrect, incorrect statement, because the whole idea of a Semite. Semites were people who lived in southwestern Asia, including northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, who spoke Ugaritic, who spoke Jeez, who spoke Ethiopic, who spoke Hebrew, who, 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 who spoke Arabic. Those are our people. We are a Semitic people. Therefore, we cannot be anti-Semitic. They can call you a hater every day just because you on ESPN. You know I don't believe that about you. I don't think anybody that listens to you should believe that about you. But telling the truth is not hating. But telling the truth is not hating. But telling the truth is not hating. It's stating fact. Okay. The logical extension is that the Bible must have originated in Africa along with practically everything else, such as the human race, the first civilizations, the first religions, art, science. And as one European scholar put it in, excuse me, put it, even the use of the spoken word. All of this we will document in later chapters in this book, according to the world's great religions. The Bible was written during some 1400 years, 1300 BC through 100 AD. Few of its many authors have been identified. No original manuscripts are known to exist, only copies of copies. Okay. However, in 1947, manuscripts uh, pertaining to Enoch were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls in Jordan at uh, Quran Cave 4, which added to our knowledge of this black uh, Ethiopian. In fact, one of the books discovered is from a larger work called uh, One Enoch or Ethiopic Enoch. Since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, a great deal of controversy has followed because no one has been able to see them for over 40 years, except for a small circle of chosen experts. Okay. And... Creators of Christianity. Here we go. Creators of Christianity. Professor Churchwood, in his work Origin and Evolution of Religion, holds that the African pygmies and the Negroes were the originators of Christian religion. J.A. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 1. Okay, and there's the books, the Christian catacombs, um, the fourth century, all the artwork. Those were Negroes, people of color, woolly hair, Afros, etc. So this has truth to it, most definitely. So a lot of these Christians, white Christians, I would say, um, Your history, well, your history as well, but your religion, the white Jesus, and all the other BS, it's fake shit. You're worshiping the devil. 
Okay, that has nothing to do with spirituality, no spiritual Israelites, or none of that BS. Okay, it started out black or Negroes. Okay, the Israelites, the Jews, the Yehudi, all people of color. Okay. Eugenics was a movement that was born in the United States under hard doctrines of racism with the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah in, uh, in the African-American community in this country. <laughs> with the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah. Besides, to them, you're not even American. You're not even African-American. You're... All right. Back at this book, uh, Jesus Christ, Son of God, was black. Professor John Jackson, Man, God, and Civilization echoes a similar view. In early Christian art, Jesus, or Yahweh Shai, or Yeshua, is almost invariably represented as a black skin. So he was a so-called man of color. In the book of Revelation, it reads, A throne stood in heaven with one seated on that throne. And be who sat it there appeared like Jasper and uh, Carnelian, if I'm pronouncing that right. Both of these are rare stones that are dark. About 15 years ago, Life magazine ran a photograph of the Pope in its private chapel. The virgin and the child pictured on the wall of the chapel were black. Okay. On the Christ Color Controversy, Black American, Volume 19, uh, number uh, 52. And this is who the world perceives as God, a white man. This is the devil. God is white. Isn't it obvious? Because you got to remember, the world's been flipped. You know, when we was in rulership, it was the white man was the devil. Now, they say the black man is the devil. You know, at least... During those um, periods of imperialism, uh, colonization, you know, they made us out to be the uh, the villains. All right. The Hebrews were dark-skinned African people. He was American, and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just right? like okay. you. Okay. Odd crime for Jew. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. His feet were like burnt brass. Revelations 1 and 15. Uh, his hair was like wool. Revelations 1 and 14. My skin is black. Job 30 and 30. Our skins were black. Limitations 5 and 10. They are black, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Hard doctrines of racism with the intent of eliminating the tribe of Judah in, uh, in the African-American community in this country. Then why do you use the word? Why call yourselves black? I mean, you people are more brown than black. Why do you call yourselves white? You people are more pink than white. <laughs> Precisely. So I have the Old Testament pseudopigrapha. Okay, volume two. Expansions of the Old Testament. Legends, wisdom, and uh, philosophical literature, prayers, hymns, odes, fragments of lost uh, Judo-Hellenistic works. Okay. Songs of Solomon. Okay. All right. Zoom in right quick. Right here. Song of Solomon. Okay. The sons and the daughters were in harsh captivity. <laughs> the neck in a seal, a spectacle among the Gentiles. God's blessing on you this morning. Yes. You? Place your 
He did this to them according to their sins or the forefathers, our forefathers, so that he abandoned them to the hands of those who prevailed. For he turned away his face from their mercy, from young and old and their children once again. Haven't we suffered this in America still to this day, in a sense? For they sinned once again by not listening. We got to obey that voice of the Most High. And the heavens were weighed down and the earth despised them. Are we despised among all nations of the earth? For no one on the earth had done what they did. Because the Most High, Moses, Mount Sinai, we had the covenant. We broke that. And the earth shall know all your righteous deeds, O God. But I do have a special one just for you. And guess what? It's the best book ever written. Okay. For they set up the sons of Jerusalem for derosion because of her prostitutes. Everyone passed um, by entered in the broad daylight. They derided their lawless actions, even in comparison to what they themselves were doing. Before the sun, they held up their unrighteousness and contempt. And the daughters of Jerusalem were available to all according to your judgments, because they defile themselves with improper intercourse. My heart and my belly are troubled over these things. I shall prove your right, O God, in uprighteousness of heart, for your judgments are right, O God. We're going to precept uh, Jeremiah 2 and 12. So the King James, Jeremiah 2 and 12. Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Most High, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves, uh, casterns, broken casterns, that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he plundered? The young lions roared at him and growled. They made his land waste. His cities are burned like um, Black Wall Street. Tulsa, Oklahoma, and many others without inhabitant. Also, the people of Nope and uh, Topanes have broken the crown of your head. Have you not brought this on yourself? And that you have forsaken the Lord your God when he led you in the way. And now, why take the road to Egypt to drink the waters of Sahor? Or why take the road to Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. Your own wickedness will correct you. And your backsliding will reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing. That you have forsaken the Lord your God the most high. And fear. And excuse me. And the fear of me is not in you. Says the Lord of hosts. Not Jesus Christ. Songs of Solomon. Uh, chapter 2 verse 16. For you have rewarded the sinners according to their actions and according to their extremely wicked sins. You have exposed their sins that your judgment might be evident. You have obliterated their memory from the earth. That's why I highlighted that. Obliterated their memory from the earth. We're the only group of people that can't trace their lineage or even, don't even know their history, for crying out loud. Calling ourselves these names like black and african-american naming ourselves after a whole continent and uh, a color that's not even our complexion some of us but it doesn't make any sense god is a righteous judge and he will not be impressed by appearances for the gentiles insulted jerusalem trampling her down why does it say the gentiles insulted jerusalem because they mocked us they whitewashed history and made their own religion. Okay. He dragged her beauty down from the throne of glory. She put on sackcloth instead of beautiful clothes. A rope around her head instead of a crown. She took off the wrath of glory which God put on her. 
and her is just a metaphor for um, Israel, okay, the most highest people. And this honor, her beauty was thrown to the ground. And I saw and implored in the Lord's presence and said, let it be enough, Lord, to make your hand heavy on Jerusalem by bringing Gentiles upon her. For they ridiculed her and did not refrain in anger and vicious rage. And they will be finished unless you, Lord, uh, censor them, equals Gentiles, in your anger. For they have not done it in zeal, but in emotional passion, to pour out their anger against us and plunder. Do not delay, O God, to repay them on their heads, to declare dishonorable the arrogance of the dragon, which is the beast, the beast system which we live in today. And I did not wait long until God showed me uh, his insolence, pronouncing it right, pierced on the mountains of Egypt. More despised than the smallest thing on earth and sea. His body was carried about on the waves in much shame. And there was no one to bury him. For he, God, had despised him with contempt. He did not consider that he was a man. For the latter, do not consider this. He said, I shall be Lord of the land and sea. And he did not understand that it is God who is great, powerful in his great strength. He is king over the heavens. So, I mean, people with common sense, you know, and you look past all the racial bias and everything that we've learned in this society. We know that the people who are described in this book look like this and not like this. Okay. It's just common sense. There's just so many evidence now. Look upon me because I am black. Solomon Songs 1 and 6. I think they took this out, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Josephus, the Jewish historian, wrote that Christ was a man of simple, mature age, dark skin with little hair. The book of Josephus. Uh, J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line. Real good book. Likewise, in the book, The World's 16 uh, Crucified Saviors, Kersey Graves makes the following observation in the pictures and portraits of Christ by early Christians is uh, uniformly represented as being black. A coin of Justine II in the British Museum shows Christ with the same tightly curled hair as that of the earlier uh, Buddhas. The Cambridge Encyclopedia says, whatever the fact, um, you know, which they depicted right here, This coin places beyond doubt that belief that Jesus Christ was a Negro. J.A. Rogers, uh, Sex and Race, Volume 1. Okay, in the ancient world, white people, yes, back then they worshipped black gods, deities. Negroes were first worshipped in Greece and Rome. White masses bow down to black deities. And as we can see, everything flipped around. Now, a lot of our people were brainwashed and they bow down to a lot of white deities because everything used to be of color. Now it is uh, non-color. OK. Um, the worship of black Isis and Horus were popular in Rome and in the Roman colonies as far north as Britain, because those islands were, you know, full of people of color, Negroid, Hemetic, you know, Jephet people as well. When this later uh, evolved into the worship of the Black Madonna and the Black Christ, white Christians also bowed down to them. Negroes, as was said, were deified in early Greece, okay? They appear as gods in Greek mythology. The chief title of Zeus, you remember the actor um, that played in Friday, his name or his character was Zeus, the lightning god. The greatest of the Greek gods was Ethos, if I'm pronouncing that right, that is black. J. Rogers' nature knows no color line. J. Rogers boldly proclaims that the earliest gods and messiahs on all the continents were black. Sex and Race, Volume 1. Okay. Um, right here. We have found the black complexion or something relating to it whenever we have approached the origin of nations. 
the alma mater, the goddess uh, Maltumama, if I'm pronouncing that right, the founders of the oracles of the Mimin, or first idols, were always black. And that's what the Most High God of Israel was telling our uh, ancestors, do not worship the idols of the other nations. Because they all were black back then. Now they're all white. Um, in my research for the origin of the ancient Druids, which were people of color, I continually found at least that my labors uh, terminated with something black. Thus the oracles of uh, Dudana and of Apollo at uh, Delphi were founded by black doves. Doves are not often, I believe, never black. Osiris and his bull were black. All the gods and goddesses of Greece were black. At least this was uh, the case with Jupiter, Bacchus, Hercules, Apollo, Ammon, the goddesses, Venus, like Venus, uh, Williams, Isis, uh, Hikata, if I'm pronouncing it right, Juno, uh, Metis, uh, Ceres, uh, Cybel were black, and uh, Camdolio in Rome. I probably butchered that word. Excuse me. The first gods in antiquity were black. The ancients viewed the sacred image of divine as black, and the holy race of gods was African. The gods of antiquity from Greece to Mexico were black. So we have Zeus of Greece, Apollo of Greece, Osiris of Egypt, Isis of Rome, and Buddha of India. But they never go back to Mesopotamia, Sumerian. Those were black gods and deities as well. Some people say the Anunnaki and all the other stuff. Let me see. Uh, Horus of Rome, uh, Fuhai of China, Zaha of Japan, uh, Quantzalcoatl of Mexico, butchered that, and Krishna of India, to name a few. Okay. In the Bible, Revelations 1 and 14, the Ancient of Days, God, is described as having hair like pearl wool. J. A. Rogers, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro, the Earliest Deities, says J. A. Rogers were woolly-haired Negroes. The peppercorn hair was a sign of divinity. Um, contrast the hairstyle of the pictures at right. Note the difference between how the hair would look for an African bus peppercorn and that of a Caucasian European straight or wavy below. A picture from the New York Times, June 18, 1985, shows a bus sculpted in um, AD 54 when the new emperor was a teenager. Okay, straight and wavy. Buddha, 7th century in Thailand. A sandstone. And so they know this. Those um, scholars, they know the truth. They just can't let this stuff out. That's why they had to chip the noses and everything else. You see the cone roll. He cites the Greek god Apollo, Jesus Christ, and Buddha as examples located in his book, Sex and Race, Volume 1, on the following plates. The black hair of the Greek god Apollo, whose rights were founded by a woolly-haired Negro uh, Delphos, see plate, 22, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. Little do people realize that the world-famous Apollo Theater in Harlem is actually named after the black god with woolly hair, African features, Apollo. The same peppercorn hair on the head of Christ on the coin bottom of plate 22. Likewise, of Buddha plates um, 26 and um, 20, I think that's 27, if I'm correct. Um... A book of the beginning, volume one, is a work written by the uh, eminent scholar G. Macy. In it, it states, or in it, he states, it is certain that the black Buddha of India was imaged in the Negroid type, and the black Negro god, whether called Buddha or Sut Nasu, pronouncing it right, we have a datum. They carried their color in the proof of their origin, the people who first fashioned and worshipped the divine image of the Negro mold of humanity must, according to all knowledge of human nature, have been Negroes themselves.
Je m'en prie. For blackness is not merely mystical. The features and hair of Buddha belong to the black race, and uh, Nasi is the Negro name. Okay. The foundation of white supremacy. How white supremacy is proven and justified. So everything has been flipped. The religious black experience. Now they have the knowledge of our ancestors and they just slap some white paint on it. Okay. Judo Christian tradition gave the world the true religion and concept of God. The white man gave us the true God. Okay. Um, in pictures of Jesus Christ, the image of of God is of a white man. Forgiveness for what, Reverend? Vivian said you told her that God is black. I simply posed it as a possibility. We don't speculate on God's color, Walter. If you ever want Vivian to speak to you again, go upstairs and tell her that God is white. But we're really not sure. I mean, the Hindus don't believe it, the Muslims, the Buddhists. God is white. It's simple logic. His son is white. Therefore, God is white. Uh, consequently, the white man as a superior being is the closest thing to God on earth. He is the chosen race to rule and have uh, special privileges and advantages based on his white skin. The white woman, by extension, is the most beautiful and precious woman on earth. Be because if it weren't the white man, the rest of the non-whites would still be uncivilized barbarians and savages, inferior beings. And they would still be pagans worshiping trees, stones, and rivers, and other uh, uh, inanimate things. Forever destined to be savage worshippers of Satan, demons, and evil. Not one genuine God-fearing Christian among them with inferior gods um, and divinities to go along with their inferior nature and intelligence. In short, uh, white ice is not only colder, but it is also holier too as a result the white image of god rests and rules in the subconscious of anyone who is exposed to white supremacy what is the color of your god supreme being in your subconscious mind most would view this bastard god but this is satan same thing how they brainwashed our people into this uh bs look at this nonsense you know, they say like um, every so generation, you know, you lose some type of knowledge if there's not someone in your family who's knowledgeable to pass that type of information down. So, I mean, just brainwashing. The Greeks and Romans believed that their religion came from Egypt and they turned to Egyptian religion up until about 100 A.D., Furthermore, the Egyptian religion survives in Christianity itself. It is more accurate to view Christianity as a Judo uh, Egypto religion rather than the Judo Greek religion. Uh, though the New Testament was written in Greek and was influenced by uh, Greek culture. Okay. In his scholarly work, uh, Mayan and Mexican Origins, he contended uh, that groups of nine gods were frequently mentioned in the pyramid texts of ancient Egypt. And in America, we have the same nine lords of the night frequently recorded in Mexico. John Jackson, man, God, and civilization. I see, turning to the great religious leaders who studied in Egypt, R.A. Day Lucas, author of her back, quotes the Bible, Acts 7.22, as saying that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, okay, including or included in the Pentanac, Patriarch, I think it's Pentanac, Study hard and heed my instructions here. You'll laugh. It'll never be the same 